How's that sound? Testing one, two. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Hey, welcome to the Deliverance Center tonight. <clears throat> Got an interesting Bible study for you. Uh, just indulge me in a short fantasy, would you? Let's assume that God, Jehovah, left his throne in heaven, came down to earth, and he only had one Bible study to share with you. Not two, just one. What would that be? What would that Bible study be if he only had one to share? I found it. I have it. I have it. If he only had one Bible study to share, it would be this one tonight. In addition, as a bonus, I have the most shocking most unbelievable scripture in all the Bible, Old or New Testament, it's in this Bible study. Double bonuses. It's like Jeopardy. All right, this is uh, the Arizona Deliverance Center. I'm Brother Mike. And uh, those are all the radio shows every week. I'm on uh, seven days a week, as you may know, or hopefully you're listening once in a while. You can catch all the radio shows all the time on the internet. They're played there 24-7 on Omni FM. I broke a record last week. I'm on every night on this uh, internet radio station. Uh, I had 48,000 listeners last week. That was a record for, record for uh, since I've been on that uh, station. I've been on there about... Uh, Four or five months, something like that. Something so, it's going well. That's a, a secular station. It's not a Christian uh, station. <clears throat> if you'd like to help us out financially, and you happen to shop at Amazon, you can just put in "Smile Amazon," put in our charity name, and they'll donate 1.2 percent of everything you buy on Amazon. Okay. Reason I signed up for that is soon there'll be no retail stores anywhere in America. And everyone will have to buy everything off of Amazon, be a new government program. Tonight's uh, teaching is on our number one YouTube channel, House of Healing AZ. We added a new one. It's at the bottom. Uh, putting on all my radio ministry uh, appearances, guest appearances. I'm putting them on that channel there. So. That's our new one. Remember the miracle list. If you know someone that wants to get delivered, but they're too afraid to come here for help, Mike at HardcoreChristianity.com, and I will send them that list, and they will, they will get healed, assuming they follow it. There's donation boxes on the doors there. Thank you for helping us pay the bills around here. We're doing fantastic. You can also donate on the website. I wrote three books. They're in the bookstore, one on uh, Satan, one on healing, and one on curing mental illness. Don't forget our booming healing rooms. They're doing fantastic. They're really something. Thursday nights at 7 p.m. in this sanctuary right here. We pull that there. They're in that sanctuary there. The other class, mental illness healing class, is down in the small sanctuary. The greatest scripture in the history of the Bible is in this Bible study. Martin Luther said this scripture was the center of the entire Bible. Leon Morris, Martin Lloyd-Jones, the Bible scholar from Wales, said it's the most important and crucial passage in the Bible. And we've got to lay some foundation for this Scripture, I just can't share it with you, you know. Patience. <clears throat> what is the status of humanity before God? 
Well, Adam set it up for us and ruined it for everybody. Correct? Romans chapter 3. Paul quotes Isaiah 59. You've read this before. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There's no one that understands. No one that seeks after God. They've all gone out of the way. They're all together unprofitable. There's none that does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Their mouths are full of bitterness and cursing. Their feet are swift to shed innocent blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Isaiah chapter 59. Everybody read that? That's our problem. God has a problem. He's perfectly, divinely holy. Human beings are sinful. And there's no exception, Paul said. Every single human being is <coughs> sinful based on two things. A, we are born in sin. That's a different Bible study, but Adam passed the sin gene down to every human being. Your sin comes down from Adam, not Eve. Each person in this room had a father. Because you had a father of some kind, even if you were born in a test tube or at a clinic, they still took sperm from a male, correct? Is my biology right? And you had some father somewhere, and that sin gene passed down to you, Paul explains in Romans 5, from Adam. Adam passed the sin gene down to each human being. They're born in sin. Then Paul explains in Romans that sin is not imputed to you until your conscience matures, and you know the difference between Morally right and morally wrong. Your sin is not imputed to you as an infant. Nobody's nodding, so there's, I know there's been a lot of sinful babies in this room, but God doesn't impute sin to a two year old. Even though they go through terrible twos. Anybody here ever had kids? Anybody had them around when they were two? Yeah, you started drinking then, didn't you? <laughs> yes, sir. Wow, you considered odd things in your mind then. Murder, things like that. You'd force them right out. They'd pop in. No, three-year-olds do not have their sin imputed to them, as Paul explained in Romans, correct? So when a baby dies or a young child dies, they go, they go to heaven because their angels do always behold the faith of my father, Jesus said. Correct? The reason for that, Paul explained, is that the sin is not imputed to you. It's not on your record. Imputation in Greek means keeping a note of it. When your conscience matures, preachers call it the age of accountability, now you're in trouble. Big trouble. Hellfire trouble. Because one sin keeps you out of heaven. One sin, not a whole lifetime of them. You know, when I came to God, I had a whole <clears throat> lifetime of sins. I had sins coming out of my ears. I had sins stacked up everywhere. I was a rotten sinner. Chasing money, chasing women, chasing skirts, ego, vestments, pride, cursing and swimming. I can go on and on. You get the general idea. I was not a holy person. Far from it. I was in deep trouble and didn't even know it. Until I heard the glorious gospel message of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Boom! I fell down at that altar. 
at Bell Road Assembly of God in North North uh, East Phoenix. I fell down begging God to forgive me. Begging. No, not praying. No, not praying. No, no, no. I went to Billy Graham rally. This was a collapse under the powerful conviction of the Holy Ghost. I was shaken in my boots, man. Shaken. Because the realization had hit me. My God. And I didn't know anything about Romans. But I had become an expert on, oh my God, I am a sinner and I am facing judgment. Oh my God, what am I going to do about it? Well, let's find out. There's the condition of humanity there. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Okay? Number two, the Bible study God wants to share with you is the real purpose of the law of Moses. You'll be very surprised. Romans 3. Now we know that what the things the law says, it says to those who are under the law. Now who's he talking about? Jews. Jews. Thank you. Uh, number one. So that every mouth may be, may be stopped. What's he talking about there? The law of Moses would not allow you to justify yourself as a good person. Because the laws were there and you were violating them. And Jehovah set up a system of laws that gave you no excuse. These are the laws and you're violating some of them. So don't give me that but, 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 but. See, American Christians love buts. But somebody else is doing it. But I'm not as bad as. No, under the law of Moses, nobody had a butt. <laughs> Very odd group of people. Now here, number two, that all the world may become guilty before God. Oh, the purpose of the law of Moses was to show you unequivocally that you were Mike Smith at that altar years ago. You I was guilty before God, and there was nothing I could do to get out of it. Now, I was used to talking my way out of stuff. Yeah. I've been married. <laughs> my God, the Holy Ghost staring at me like that. I had nothing to say. I couldn't get out of anything. It was over. I just fell down the field. Bang. Face first. Ooh, Peter Pandon. You have no excuse and you can't talk your way out of it. That was the purpose of the law of God. It's right there. You are guilty. Romans 7. Paul quotes out of Exodus 20. What shall we say then? Is the law itself sin? No. I didn't know sin, third purpose of the law, except by the law. It, the law said, hey, stop lusting. I didn't even know that was a sin, he said. But then I read there, stop lusting. He goes, oh my God, I'm sinning. Right? Okay. Four. Romans 7. Sin, taking occasion. What does that mean? Lambano amorphe means to sin took an opportunity to take you. Sin wouldn't have had it, wouldn't have been able to do that if God hadn't given you the law. Paul in Romans treats sin like a spirit, like it's a person. It's amazing how it's worded. Except dia through the commandment. So if I didn't know lust was a sin, I'm fine. Bring on the gals. Let's party. When the law of God came in and said, hey, Mike, that's a sin in the eyes of God. That cost you your soul. All of a sudden, sin manifested in me and took me. He explains it. Number five, sin wrought. 
Katagazumai means to accomplish. Sin accomplished in me, in me, all manner of epithemia, lusts. Sin did it. Sin wouldn't have done it had it not been for the law. <clears throat> for without, Corey's means separate from, different from, separate from the law, sin was what? Necros is the Greek word for a corpse. Sin in Paul was dead. If I don't know something's wrong, I'm like a kid. It's not bothering me. It's no problem. But when God came along and said, hey, that's wrong. That's a sin. <gasps> what happened to me? Sin took me over. It's in me. Apart from the law, sin was a corpse. Dead. I was alive without the law. I thought I was fine. Before I walked into that Assembly of God church, I had problems like everybody else, but I had no idea I was an abomination to God. I had no idea. I know I was in eternal trouble. I didn't know I was going to go to hell. I, was a, I saw myself as, a, you know, at times a good person. I mean, after all, I wasn't doing what these people were doing. I never murdered anybody. That should get me in. I never raped a gal. I begged. That's di that's different than raping. I was alive without the law. But the law did what? Number six. When the law came in, sin revived in me. What sin? The sin I didn't know was there. I was born in sin from Adam. Every person has a seed of death in them. And when you, when sin revives, your clock starts ticking. I had it, but I didn't know I had it. Right? It's like pancreatic cancer. Nobody knows they had it. Nothing, nobody knows they have it until about three weeks before they're dead. It's just click, suddenly diagnosed. I had something worse than pancreatic cancer. I had the seed of Adam's sin in me. And when the law came and pointed out I was sinning, hey, that's wrong. <gasps> Adam revived in me. He took me. And I died. The soul that sinneth, it shall. These infants don't have the law. They're fine. They're giggling, they're pooping their pants, they're running around. It's it's all good. See that? There are certain people that are separate from the law. People in jungle. Right? But once that person there, his conscience matures, and they know the moral difference between right and wrong, which happens in everybody differently. Everybody's an individual. At that moment, once you violate your conscience, click. 
sin is then imputed to you. And one sin keeps you out of heaven. Not 150,000. Not 10 years of it. As soon as you sin, when you're young, the clock starts ticking. The end is down yonder. You're going to die. For the soul that sins, dies. The commandment, which was ordained to give me life, right? I found to be death. Why was that? We well, explains it. The law caused the seed of sin to resurrect from the dead in my body, inside me. And that brought my death. I died. I'm going to physically die, then I'm going to go to hell and eternally die. The sin gene you inherited when you were conceived. What's conceived mean? Here's an egg. There's the troublemaker. <laughs> Boom. Human being. Oh no. Sin gene transferred. From where? Here. Not here in the egg. It's here. Click. It was there. Adam. Dad, 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 dad. You. However, at that point you were without the law. All aborted babies go go to heaven. Exactly. They don't go to hell. Why? We just went through that. No imputation. Okay. Sin, Romans 7, taking occasion by the commandment. Number 8, deceived me by it. The law allowed sin to deceive you. And then it murdered me. This sounds nuts. The law of God caused your death when it was supposed to save you. Home Alone. <laughs> Therefore the law is holy The commandment is holy and just and good now. How in the world can this work? How can something good and just and divine cause me to die? Was then that which was good death to me no Paul says no the law caused Adam to revive in you. It was the trigger that caused sin to come to the forefront and take you. Sin. Number nine. The ninth purpose of the law was to cause sin to appear sin. Final means to illuminate sin. See, when I was living in sin, I saw stuff wrong. Then I saw other stuff more wrong. Then I saw other stuff really wrong in my own moral system. Right? So I saw, tell it, shut up, will you? Let me think straight. I saw that as wrong. And then I saw this over here. Well, you, I saw that as a little more wrong. 
then I saw Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wayne Gacy as really wrong Are you with me? I had my own system of morals and righteousness as a person as every person does See so in your moral system you would see something that's wrong Maybe I don't and he might see that right uh, And she might see it very wrong See, Right uh, there's a huge debate now in politics is abortion wrong at one week? Well, this group says no. How about two weeks? This group says no. That group over there says yes, it's wrong. And they fight all the way up through the nine months. Are you with me? That's human morality. Okay. The law showed the horrors of the sins that you think ain't too bad. It illuminated my God, you're kidding me. So when I fell that day at the altar, I had an illumination of what and who I was Amen. and what kind of a person I really was. I was under God's microscope. He, was, he had me on the Petri dish there looking at me. <laughs> and, and the Holy Ghost, come on down. Amen. You roll that thing down, you get a closer look at it. I had no idea I was getting looked at closely. I had no idea that I had been looked at closely from the moment of conception until that moment. I didn't know it. I was well, spiritually ignorant. I was out of it. I didn't understand anything, really. I thought I was a genius. What did it do? Number seven, the law caused death in me through that which was good. The law, which is good, Caused me to die. Was it the law that did it? No. The law triggered the monster living in me. Sin. Revived. And I died. Why is God going through all this? We'll get to that in a minute. Thanks for thinking that. Paul treats sin like a demon here. It's a demon that takes your life. It controls you. It causes you to do things you don't want to do. You say stuff you don't want to say. You behave in ways you don't want to do. That sin, by the commandment, might, number 10, the 10th purpose of the law was what? Might become exceedingly sinful. Hey, Mike, Mike. You thought that was kind of wrong. You thought that was a little more wrong. You thought that was horribly wrong. Jehovah saw it all Amen. as hideously wrong. Your moral system, Mike, sucked. <laughs> <gasps> My God, I was wrong. I'm guilty. What happened? Sin <sighs> revived, and I died. Sin murdered me. Why? He used the law to do it. People are like that. They'll use good things to cause bad things. Flattery and so on. Con artists, Nigerian telemarketers. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Reese, hey, how you doing? I just inherited 50,000. No, dude, you didn't inherit any money. Click. Romans 7 we know the law is spiritual I am oh my god I'm carnal I'm sold out to sin like Adam Romans 7 that which I do I Gnosko don't understand that which I do I don't understand what I Thalo want to do that's not what I do but what Maseo, what I despise doing, that's what I do. Before the law came, I was fine. I was doing stuff and it's all good. I didn't despise any of it. You know, I wanted to change some of it. Maybe I made a mistake here and there. Whatever, everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. I had all kinds of backup excuses for everything. 
You couldn't catch me. I just cough up a bunch of phony stuff. I was married more than once. I learned how to get out of stuff. <laughs> See, sin takes over the person, and in their mind, they want to do stuff that's right, but they end up doing stuff wrong. Oh, yeah, it happens all the time in Christian dating. <laughs> you, ever, you ever seen Christians date youth group? We're going to the movie tonight, and I am not going to put my hand on her breast. I'm not putting my hand on her crotch. Where I'm not, we're not having sex. By intermission, they're in the back seat, humping away. Yeah. Why? See, I didn't. They didn't want to commit adultery. They don't want to do it. They told God they didn't want to do it. They asked God forgiveness before they did it, and then what happens? Sin. Clunk. Backseat. Anybody here older than me? Convertible? All right. Okay. Don't have any old people here. What I say, though, what I want to do, see, I want to do what's right. I end up doing what I despise. Who's doing that? The law? No, the law is good and just and is of God. Don't do that. Do that. Don't do that. You'll hurt somebody or yourself. Do that. You'll help somebody or yourself. The law didn't do it, but when I found out these things were wrong, sin took me over. And I am in the back seat. <laughs> before I got to the moon, before I picked her up. Hey. Oh, yeah. They make vows. You ever heard of those Christian youth vows? We're not doing it before we're married. When you hear the word we're engaged, something's bad going on. <laughs> yeah, don't, uh, don't dig any deeper. You don't want to know. Sin is more powerful, Paul says, than you are. It's more powerful than God's laws. God's law told you, don't do that. You're going to get in trouble. You did it anyway. Who's stronger? Sin is stronger. The sin you inherited from Adam, your sin gene, born in sin, that sin you've been participating in and feeding is more powerful than the laws of God and more powerful than you are. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. If you don't believe me, ask yourself a question. Stuff that you want to do all the time, do you do it all? No, you don't. Stuff you don't want to do, do you not do that? No. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. I'm going to yell at my kids anymore. That's it. I'm, I've been praying about <laughs> Hey, Mom, Johnny just uh, wiped his diaper on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> that was right after you took a vow to God. See, the stuff you... Am I helping anybody by acting a fool up here? I'm trying to get a point across. You have a camera in my house. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> you want to do stuff right because you're a good person and you want to do the right thing. Amen. But sin is on steroids and you don't work out. <laughs> sin is a power lifter. You're in a wheelchair, disabled. Sin is a monster. You are a gutless wonder. <laughs> and by reading the law, doesn't help. Hey, if you've ever been a parent, it's right in front of your face. Sandy, now listen, don't pull off these antique things over here. These are very important, okay? Thank you. Okay, Mom. Crash two feet later. As soon as you tell a kid not to do something, that's what they want to do. Oh, I know. Some of your kids don't stink. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Romans 7. If then I do that which I don't want to do, I, symphony. What does that mean? That's where we get our English word symphony. A symphony plays together. See? 
this group doesn't play a different song from that one. They're all in unison, correct? If I do that which I don't want to do, Thalo, I am in agreement with the law. It's good. If the law says, Mike, don't do that, I look at it, I go, well, that's the law's right. I shouldn't do that. That's going to hurt me or hurt somebody else. Right? Now then, it's no more I that do it. Okay? Catagonzomai means to it's, it accomplishes this in you. It fulfills it. It's not me that's accomplishing this, but sin that lives in me. Oikeo is what you would call a home where someone lives. Sin has moved in and lives in me like I'm his house. And he pushes me to do things I don't want to do. I say things I don't want to say. He's always behind everything, pushing me to do what's wrong and break the laws of God. The law of God is good, but it unleashed a monster dormant in my soul. He's inside me. Sin revived. I died. He's out of control. I can't stop it. Romans 7, I know that in me, in my convertible, in my flesh, dwells, or kale, lives like a house, living there, what? Nothing good. Now he's talking about your body. Okay, listen carefully. I want to, to will, or what I want to do, is present. But, how to get my body to do it, I can't do it. Why? Sin is more powerful than you are, and more powerful than the law of God. Thus saith the Lord, don't eat that apple the law of God don't eat it eat all those leave these red ones here and don't touch them the green apple tree go over there and eat them go on and clean you out <laughs> the pear tree knock that sucker off but don't eat out of that tree what tree did they end up eating out of I didn't hear you the, they wanted to do what was right to will is there, but how to perform it? My God, I can't do it. The good I would do, Thalo, I want to do, I don't do it. The evil I don't want to do, that's what I do. With what? He said, your body. Everybody follow me. Okay. Thank you. Feeling better now. Now, if I do what I don't want to do, it is no more I doing it, but sin living dwells, oikeo, living in me like a house. Sin lives in my body and Pushes me to do things I don't want to do. None of this would have happened if it hadn't been for the law of God. Is he at a fault? No. Why? We'll get to that in a minute. The law triggered a domino syndrome and I ended up in hell. Because I had something in me the day before I fell down at the altar. I didn't know I had in there. I didn't know anything about Adam's sin. 
I didn't know I had inherited, like my skin color, you see. See your skin color, sir? Yes, sir. A little different than mine. <coughs> a little bit. You and I had nothing to do with it. We was born with it. I was born with something else. A sin gene that caused me to die. It pushed me to do things I didn't want to do. Oh, yeah. Ever heard of diet? Uh-huh. That's a multi-billion dollar industry. You know why? It's caused by sin genes. Sin pushes you to eat, and the person doesn't want to do it. Uh-huh. Yeah, as a pure hobby, I watch my 600-pound life. That's right. That's right. You don't know what I'm talking about because you don't watch it. This show is incredible for ministers and counselors. If you watch a 600-pound life story, it is a fantastic revelation into the heart of sin and rejection demons and fear demons. They're all on display in the show. You know exactly what happened to these poor people. I watch them and I, I'm following it along spiritually like it's nothing. It's so easy to see. It's all spiritual. It, sin pushes you to do stuff you don't want to do. Any person understands what I'm saying who used to be an addict or is an addict. Everybody understands exactly what I'm talking about. Addicts don't want to smoke. <laughs> you look like an idiot sitting around puffing up. <clears throat> Put that pipe out of your mouth, you idiot. <laughs> you chewing again, you're going to mouth cancer. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> the guy's going, God, I wish I could quit chewing. <coughs> Have you ever seen that? Oh, yeah. You ever seen the cancer you get from there? They cut like half your face off. I mean, it's ugly. Jeez, it's ugly. What's causing that? This monster. The stuff I want to do, I don't do. The stuff I don't want to do, oh my God. That's what I seem to end up doing. I helping anybody all triggered by the original domino Beep. God's holy law the law is holy and perfect designed to save me and it led to my death why it resurrected a monster living in me I didn't know was there I was a secular counselor for 25 years what I'm teaching here if they heard me right now They'd be out in the hall holding their guts laughing or calling 911 to get a psychiatrist out here and get me put on a gurney and hauled off somewhere. How could a guy go from understanding these are behavioral habits and behavioral psychological issues to they think I was crazy? They would. They're crazy. I, through the Holy Ghost, came to my senses. Yeah. It's not me doing it, he said. It's sin dwelling in my body. Sin's in my body. Check it out. Let's keep going. In this section in Romans, God reveals six laws that nobody knows exist. There's the law of God. Everybody knows that. There's the law of sin. There's the law of your mind. There's the law of the spirit of life in Christ. There's the law of faith. And there's a law for this monster. Right here. Let's check them out. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Romans 7. I delight in the law of God after what? Not my body. My inward man, which is made up of four things. What? Your mind, your conscience, your soul, and your spirit. That's your inner man. When you drop dead, those four things leave your body and still exist somewhere, hopefully in heaven. Your body clunks there and goes to the funeral. Correct? Okay. But in your inner man, you want to do the right thing. See? 
people who are, have not completely lost their mind like Charles Manson a regular person if you looked inside their heart they really would like to change their life and do better and most people are basically you know they want to do something for God in in inside but this thing drives them off I see another law in my members Greek word melos body parts which body part is the essential one we won't go there which is the food one okay your body parts Paul says are what you use to express the sin hiding in your body your sin wants to take over your body and cause you to sin your inner man goes, no, not. I'm not overeating today. Nope, I'm not committing adultery today. No, nope, I'm not watching that kind of TV show anymore. Nope, I'm not doing this. I don't want to do it. I don't like it. I don't want to do it. Back to doing it. Now, you know what? I'm not going to get mad at so-and-so today. The guy is an idiot. <laughs> Everything he says is stupid. But you know what? I'm, I'm prayed up, man. That moron at work, I've been fasting over that imbecile. <laughs> I have been. I ain't gonna, I'm fine. I'm over it. I'm done. Hey, you're done. Hey, you pull into work and he's parking in your spot. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, sin goes, you know what? You only get about four to five, six years for murder. <laughs> and a thought comes to your head. He needs to die. See, you wanted to let it go. But sin in your body said, no, you're not letting nothing go. No, 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 you've been violated. Vengeance is yours, says your body. Your body parts, melos, warring against the law of my mind. The body doesn't want to do stuff. The mind doesn't want it to do, vice versa. Bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. Which is in my malos body parts. Body parts. Your body is your enemy and wants to run its own life and drag you with it. Look, you've got an inner man, and literally almost everybody who testifies about a near death experience. Or something like that it says that the spirit man is in a similar shape as the you in other words they don't say oh you know I got I was out of my body and you know I look like Casper the friendly ghost no they've got if you left your body right now you would have two arms two legs some kind of torso ahead the the inner man seems to fill the suitcase so to speak fills it up in a way Exactly how that work obviously I don't know But in the inner man you want to serve God You want to do what's right but your enemy Is your body and your body parts it says Romans 7 a wretched man that I am Okay, Paul was fine until the law showed up he wasn't a wretched man then in his mind He was fine, but the law showed him. Hey, you are sinning And then Adam sprung to life and took me I died He's killing me Who's going to rule my that's a different Greek word than the normal deliverance word it means to rescue someone like the Titanic they were going around picking people up out of the water you watch that movie rest they were rescuing them Paul wants to know who's gonna rescue me from this what body of death every person born 
with that sin gene in them does what? Eventually dies. Who's going to rescue me from this thinking mess? Okay, let's figure it out. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now he says, a statement is so insightful, it's amazing. It's like he knows American Christians. He says, with my mind, I serve the law of God. Now is that, that's, you know, I mean, assuming you're not mentally ill, if you have a, if you're not mentally ill, your mind naturally kind of goes, well, you know, I'd like to do better. I'd like to change. I'd like to improve. I need to get more exercise. I want to get a better job. I want to, you know, your mind wants to do better. And if that's all you listen to, you'd be much better off. But if you yield to the law of the flesh, your body goes back into sin. Paul told the Corinthians, he said, listen, sometimes I have to beat my body and bring it into subjection, lest having preached to others, I should become an adocumus, a reprobate. What was Paul saying? Every human being has these bifurcations. You have your body and you have your mind. Every Christian has it. You yield to your renewed mind in Christ. You live for God. You yield over to this thing. You will serve the law of sin. Yeah, here's an American Christian for you. The guy's at church, and he's got all the stuff down pat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God love you, brother. Be blessed, brother. Be blessed, brother. I prophesy good. See, that's coming out of his mind, and there for a split second, the guy might believe that crap. But then later on, back to you know what? It's so easy to see, isn't it? If your inner man is strengthened, the power of your flesh goes. If your inner man is neglected and weak, American Christianity. Thick, thick. How are you doing, brother? You're really doing like hell. Good. Hallelujah. So you got your church face on. Get that church face. The church crap is all complete baloney. Right. This is the truth, not that crap you see at church. <laughs> All right, before we get to the super super verse, what is religion? I just explained it to you. It's man's ability using his own ability to please God. Check it out, Romans 10. I bear the Jews' witness and record that they have a zeal for God. Okay, That's very common in religion, isn't it? Yeah. They have tremendous zeal. Do you watch any of those Scientology shows? <laughs> Exposés? Well, Scientology, if you leave that organization, it's a powerful cult. They they have a tremendous zeal to try to tear you to shreds if you leave Correct Paul had a tremendous zeal to murder and imprison Christians because he thought he was doing what was right His flesh was murdering them 
right? He had a great zeal. Religion gives person a person tremendous false zeal. Oh, the guys that the Saudi Arabians that flew into the Twin Towers, they had more zeal than any Christian you'll ever meet. That took guts. That took zeal. That took dedication. That took sacrifice. What happened to the poor guy? Well, he didn't understand this Bible study, and after those guys boomed, and their spirits all went to hell. They didn't know it. They thought they were heading for Virgin City. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of virgins. Yeah. I myself wouldn't want a bunch of virgins. <laughs> I'd like to have a, a woman that had some skills and some experience. But that's a personal thing. It's personal. That 60 virgins, that, I don't have the time or energy to get through 60 virgins. Burned out. Give me somebody who knows what they're doing. But that's, that's just me. Maybe you're different. Whatever. Well, it's, it's fine. Virgins are fine. But get get this the zeals the Jews had zeal Paul says check it out But but not according to epignosis full knowledge Gnosis is where we get our English word Gnostics. That's to understand epignosis means to fully understand The Jews had knowledge of God tremendous knowledge because they had the oracles, but they didn't have the full knowledge of God what We've been studying tonight. They didn't have that Their ignorance of God's righteousness In religion it helps you establish your own righteousness if I do all these wonderful things I Will be in better standing with God Correct that's the purpose of religion they go about to establish their own righteousness Having not submitted to the righteousness of God What in the world is the righteousness of God Well some bombshells you will never be righteous Never you can't be To go to heaven, you have to have the righteousness of God. That's right. <laughs> Something I will never have. Now I've got a big problem. Do I not? The Jews have got a big problem. They did not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the telos of the law. What does telos mean? The completion of it, the end of it. The law ended at Christ. In Christ, I kept the law perfectly. In Christ, I am the righteousness of God. Before I fell down at that altar that day, I had gone about with my own system of morality, and I, my own system of morality, each person has one, generally speaking, makes themselves look a little better than they are. Your own system of morality tends to skew it your way. What a thought. Not knowing that it's utterly and completely worthless. I had no idea that one sin ended it for me years ago when I was young. One sin. I had one sin. <laughs> you got to be kidding. <clears throat> one sin damns you. Yep. Cool. The law 
ended in Christ. And now, because I believe God's righteousness is imputed to me. When I was young and I sinned the first time, my sin was imputed to me then. It started and my clock started kicking. Tick, 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 dead at the end. Hell after that. But when I fell down at that altar that day, oh my goodness, mercy knocked on the door. Holy smoke. I fell down. I renounced my own righteousness. It was like I had a big chew. I renounced my own goodness. I renounced my own intelligence and my own knowledge. I renounced everything about me. I didn't want any of it anymore. And God gave me the righteousness of God in Christ. Here's the sacred circle. You know what it is. All the religions are there. Main religions, anyway, and these are the religions the Antichrist is going to take over, including Christianity. There, there's going to become a great apostasy. As you know, I think it's kind of already started, or it's at least prepping it. It all is taken over. Here's the pillars of Islam. If you do these things, you look better to Allah, God. Uh, here's the Ten Commandments. If you do, if you do, don't do those things. You look better to Jehovah. It's not true. Here's the uh, Jewish uh, laws. The, the you got to do all that. So here's Hindu laws. You in the mood for any of those? Okay. Those if you do. How about Buddha laws? Anybody? Here's a guide for lay people. Buddhist rules. I didn't get any amens on that. How about Baha'i? You like those laws? If you keep all the Baha'i laws, you are in better standing with God. You see the purpose of it? Uh, have you ever seen any Sikhs? They're, sometimes they uh, get confused for Muslims because they wear stuff on their head. But they're not, they don't have any, it's, it's apples and orange. There's no relation there. But if you keep all these, for example, if you be kind and you work hard and you stay humble, and you smile often, <laughs> and you stay loyal, keep yourself honest, you travel when possible, <laughs> you never stop learning, I hope you're learning something tonight, that's my prayer, and if you're always thankful and you love, God will look down at you more favorably, are you following this, that's religion, I'm I'm in a religion, and I'm doing the things of that religion, and that is improving my stand in God's attitude toward me. Is that making sense? So if I'm doing the five pillars, if I go to the, uh, once a year, go to Saudi Arabia, if I do this and that, if I eat these certain foods, click, 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 if I do these certain things, God looks at me more favorably. Mike's my guy, you're heathen. Because you ain't doing what they told me to do. Is that making sense? Yeah. And, well, how about Catholicism? You got your seven sacrament. Anybody know those? Yeah, they're in. Everybody does. I just heard a moan, so somebody here, here is ex Catholic. There's the seven sacraments translation, if you obey that. Here's the bridge to total freedom. Anybody interested in that? Scientology. That cost you a couple hundred grand there. <laughs> okay. Foundation laid. Who wants the greatest, most powerful, insane verse in the Bible? Here it comes. Shocking. Shocking. It's shocking. Ready? Martin Luther's with me on this. So I, got a, I got a voucher. Here it comes. This is God's eternal bombshell. Nobody could believe it when it was in there. Here it is. Romans 
chapter 3 verse 20 ergon is a Greek word for works by the works of the law no one will ever be justified Ikaio <laughs> is the Greek word it means to be declared innocent translation my translations are always very interesting. This is Brother Mike's translation. Nothing you do is ever going to help you with God. That's apostasy. Oh, try it. Eat everything you think God wants you to eat. Say everything you think God wants you to say. Do everything you think he wants you to do. Oh, got to be kind. Let's go back to Sikhism. That's the best one. You have to be sweet. Sweet and nice. See? I learned that when I was dating, but I forgot about it after I got married. I got to eat proper foods that God approves of. I got to do my charity work. I gather up all my used clothes at home. They all smell great. I take them down and I donate them. It's a Salvation Army. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's my feet. Come on up. Start kissing. Oh, I do what's right. I'm very nice to people. And you know what else I do, sir? I smile a lot. Yeah. You haven't been smiling at me too much, so I think I'll go over here. I smile a lot. See? That makes me a good person. Especially when I'm at church. How you doing, brother? Good. Brother. I get that fake crack. What's God telling you? Nothing you do will ever please him. You didn't hear me. You cannot be justified through religion. You can never be declared not guilty. You will always be guilty doing something on your own. You should have seen the Jews freak when they read this verse. Mm -hmm. You should have seen it. I didn't see it. I'm just imagining it. They spent their entire lives reading the Torah, following the laws that God, the true God, had laid out for them. Never knowing that wasn't the purpose of the law, to try to get them to keep all the laws. The purpose of the law was to show you that you can't keep them. You can't. Measure up to God. All your righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of the Lord. What's the Hebrew word for filthy rags? Oh, some gal. Yes, sir. That gal's that gal's a uh, traveling tampon salesman. Yeah. It was menstrual rags. Okay. Your righteousness, your good things you do, is like a box of used Kotexes. Take the visual, buddy. No one will ever be justified trying to keep God's laws. Five pillars of faith, faith absolutely worthless. Being nice to people and smiling? <laughs> Utterly worthless in the eyes of God. You are guilty before God, no matter what you do. No matter how good you are. No matter how much you try. You're guilty. What if I change and put on a, turn over a new leaf? Everybody in hell would give any... Anything to turn over new leaves. They've all turned over new leaves. It doesn't do any good. Nothing you do has any value in the eyes of God. Nothing. Well, what if I give my body to be burned and sacrifice my whole life for helping other people? Absolutely useless to God. You are no closer to God by sacrificing your life for a good cause. None. By the works of the law, no one will ever be declared not guilty in God's sight. 
for by the law is the epignosis full knowledge of sin The Jews and the Muslims for example go around memorizing the Torah and the Talmud and the Quran and the Hadith and all that they memorize it why so they don't disobey anything in it never knowing that is a useless activity Did he just say that I did and I'm leaving the service early <laughs> Security reasons Eric you're in charge in about five minutes <laughs> Nothing you do that's good means a tinkers hoot to God Yeah threw in the 19th century there like that uh, Nobody likes that. Okay, we'll skip it the law was only designed to get you to understand the monster living in there the monster you inherited at conception the monster of sin the law was only designed to show you you can't keep it because you want to keep it your body won't I don't want to have a bad thought about that person anymore. It's just, oh, this is so silly. As soon as they come around again, click, click, click. Three, four thoughts pop in there. Gosh, they're fat. Gosh, they're stupid. Look at that outfit. And then it just clicks through. <laughs> you see, are you making this stuff up? Listen, I've been in counseling for 37 years. I know, that's the only thing I know is people. I don't know anything else. That's, that's what happens. The mind goes into areas. Negative, 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 and then you start feeling negative about the person. What? You get that yuck factor. Ugh. Well, what if I help the pastor out? And yeah, I'm sure he'll appreciate it, but it's not going to do you one bit of good with God. Nothing. You do. Nothing you ever do. Will declare you innocent Galatians chapter 3 the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified declared innocent same Greek word by faith not doing laws Well, wait a minute, Mike. You're, you've got, you've lost your mind here. Are you telling us we shouldn't do good things? Oh, absolutely not. We'll get to that in a minute. But if I do her a good deed, that does not improve my status in the eyes of God at all. If I help you, Amen. if I help you, then I help you. God doesn't go. Look at Brother Mike, he's killing it. <laughs> Stupid. It doesn't help me one bit. Isn't, isn't anybody getting this? The law told me, listen, like a school teacher. No, no, that's not two plus two is not twelve, Mike. Two plus two, four, stoop. The law was my schoolmaster. Mike, you can't keep the law. Run to Jesus for mercy. Run over there. You'll never make it over here. Run to grace, Mike. I did. I ran to grace. After that, faith has come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. Translation, you are not under the law. You are now under grace. Well, if you're just under grace and you can do anything you want. No, that's greasy grace. Not the grace of God. We'll get to that in a second. The law told me, hey, 
kid you can't get all the questions on the test right you can study Till the cows come home. You're not going to pass every test and get every question, right? Not going to happen. In school, if you miss one question on a test, you get an A. In the kingdom of God, you die and go to hell. I'll tell you what. If you run to Christ, he already took all them tests and passed them. He'll transfer an A to you. And you are justified. In the eyes of God. I'm just enjoying my own Bible study. I don't care what you're doing. From the days of John the Baptist until now, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven suffers biadzo. What is that? Have you ever seen a, a YouTube video? I watched one the other day of Black Monday. You ever seen that at Walmart? Or a department store or a mall people are lined up from here clear to the parking lot and uh, the uh, clerks and everybody are in the store before it opens the mall opens and they're all shaking in fear because somebody has to open the door they open the door and like cattle the people are rushing through have you ever seen those yeah what yeah, they show it on TV that it's like a stampede coming through and then 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 this gal here Who is unfortunately overweight and doesn't have the maneuverability and the coordination to get through it clunk she hits the deck Boom. What happens to her? Well, they don't pay them clerks enough to dive into that to save them. So they just leave them until the crowd comes through and then they pick them up in pieces later that's Biazzo that's Biazzo the Jews that were hearing the message of Christ on grace and mercy were running from the law stampeding to get away from it because none of them could keep it the law only gave you the knowledge of your sin the law only condemns you. And people were crashing into the kingdom of heaven and grace. And it says here, the people crashing through, Biazzo, take it by force. Harpazo is the Greek word used to describe the rapture in Thessalonians. When the rapture hits, the person is snatched. Snatched out. You don't just kind of float up. Oh, I'm being raptured. Hi. <laughs> See ya. Hey, Bill. Take my wallet, man. See ya. <laughs> no, that's not what happens. The Bible says it's a snatching. Boom. Give me that. Bang. You're gone. You're out. Like, boom. It's gone. That's what that word means. It's to snatch away. Pull away. See? They take it by force. People who understand this teaching tonight are so grateful to be in grace. Because they're going, holy smoke. I was trying to improve myself to please God in a way like I did when I was a child. And I used to try to please my dad and he would ignore me or he wasn't around or my mom would interrupt me or my siblings thought I was the gook of the family and I got tossed aside and then I became a people pleaser and I thought well if I, if I learn to kiss people's butts maybe they'll be nice to me and they, 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 they discover later that making people happy and being a doormat it makes you makes them disrespect you and then they use you No good deed ever goes unpunished and the more you do from someone the less they like you They begin to take you for granted Amen. What look at that the law and the prophets Prophesied until when 
whoa the birth of John the Baptist from that moment forward God instituted the dispensation of grace He set up an entirely new system to justify human beings They thought by keeping all these laws they were being justified But by the works of the law no one will ever be justified They had the whole thing backwards Check it out the law and the prophets were until John since that time the kingdom of God is preached and every man does what? Black yeah, black Monday Crashes into it. There they are They're ready to go in That exact same thing Happened to me when I was 19 years old. I went to see a Catherine Kuhlman service in Tulsa, Oklahoma I did a YouTube video on it. I, we were standing in line two hours outside and I'm here and there's about 75 80 people there because I got there early with my family So there was only about 50 75 people ahead of me going through that door and then around uh, Maybe Center at ORU the basketball Center, you know you had doors. It looked like the Coliseum Arizona Coliseum you ever been there you had doors all the way around it, right? So the people had come in everywhere all the way around the building and they were lined up Clear back. It was unbelievable. They were busing in people, but all the buses were full. They were coming in from four or five states away. I didn't even know what was going on. I couldn't believe it. Well, a couple hours later, the uh, ushers started to monkey around near the doors. Well, that set off a chain of excitement around the whole place. So everybody started getting ready to go. And I noticed everybody was getting jacked because they saw the ushers moving near the doors. And then suddenly, this actually happened to me exactly. Suddenly, boom! All at once, the double doors, boom, they came open. And it set off a Black Monday scenario. I started, oh, the doors are open, let's go. I, no, I was being picked up. <laughs> the person behind me had a knee up my fanny. I was on the person in front of them, and I was tiptoeing into the thing, and I was the, the thing was coming right to me, and the the doors opened up, and there was a brace in between them, and I was heading right for that brace, and I was struggling, with it, and I finally dove to my left, and boom, the thing went like that. I flopped in. Oh my God, where's my family? Are they alive? I started running as fast as I could. I got to get down to the front and see what this is all about. What was it? Kuhlman had brought the power of the Holy Ghost, which is the grace of God, to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Biazzo, the people were crashing in to get to it. And they were not disappointed. That service was something. The video, I, I went through it all in the video. Here's American Christian version of Biazzo. <laughs> oh man, this grace stuff is great. You can sin as much as you want, say you're sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's all good. You got your greasy grace going. Wow. America is so bad. Somebody needs to get a revival going. I'm working on it. <clears throat> okay, here it is. God's eternal miracle. Now, Paul says, now the righteousness of God, Chorus, separate from the law. The law is over here, but God's righteousness is over here. Oh boy, if I go to the law, I'm condemned. The law is like a schoolmaster. Go to Christ. Go over there. Run over there. Quick, go. I did. I felt boom. The law is manifested, being witnessed by the laws and the prophet. The righteousness of God, dia, through faith in Christ, to all and upon all who 
keep the laws five pillars of faith be nice Ooh, smile at church <laughs> smile at church no 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 none of that crap will do you one bit of good nothing nothing will do you any good God's righteousness was purchased for you in Christ apart from the law for Jesus fulfilled the law it came to an end you are under grace not laws there's no difference to anyone now Jews Gentiles what's Gentiles it's a Greek word ethnos it means the nations in the eyes of God there was one nation the nation of Israel then there was all the others there was only one chosen nation Israel right and the rest of them were the nations. There's no difference now between Jews and Gentiles. Bonds or frees, men or women. You are all one in Christ. Why? Because you now have the righteousness of God in Christ in there. How'd you get that? Well, you renounced your own righteousness. You renounced your own goodness. You renounced your failure to keep the law. You renounced the things of the law you did keep and you were proud of. Oh, I fasted today. <laughs> you renounced everything about you and fell on the stone so the stone doesn't fall on you. When the stone falls on you, ooh, you are ground to powder. If you fall on the stone like I did that day, you are only broken in pieces, and then the Holy Ghost comes in to mend and heal the pieces. Why? Because you are righteous and justified in the eyes of God. You have been declared not guilty. But you don't know my life, Mike. No, you don't understand. You haven't been listening to the Bible study. <laughs> I've been a counselor for 37 years. I know your life. Yeah. It's been ugly. It doesn't matter. You are now the righteousness of God to all and upon all who, what? Keep the law. No. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but you are justified, declared innocent, by his migrate, his chorus, undeserved, unwarranted favor. Through what? The apolutrosis. It means the ransom that God paid to save you, which was sacrificing his son to be butchered. That was the sacrifice for your sin. Keeping the law did you no good except show you you can't do it. You can't be good. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's not you. It's not about you. Well, I'm not as bad as so on. It doesn't matter if you committed one sin and they committed 50 million. Both of you go to hell. What's the diff? <laughs> one sin doesn't get you, will keep you out of heaven. The righteousness of God in Christ in you and upon you gets you through the pearly gates huge Got a lot of heathen here tonight <laughs> Romans 3 whom God set forth Jesus to be a what a hilasterion what is that that was the mercy seat on the ark of the covenant remember that there was a lid on it, and if in there were all the super valuables, the commandments were in there, click the lid down. Once a year, the high priest went in with a hyssop. Remember that? Poured the blood on the mercy seat, on the Ark of the Covenant. Remember that? There's no Ark of the Covenant anymore. It's, it's worthless. It's useless. 
the ark of the covenant and the mercy seat is now Christ God set him forth as the mercy seat through faith in not goat's blood, but the precious blood of Christ. Yeah. To do what? To declare what? My righteousness? I'm a good person? Good God, no. I'm the opposite. His righteousness. For what? The remission of all my sins. Ephesus means they are removed. They're gone. I don't have them anymore. I fell on the mercy seat that day, didn't even know it. I didn't know what a mercy seat was that day. I just, I needed a miracle. I know what it is now. Romans 3, to declare at this time his righteousness, not mine. That he might be the just and the justifier of those who believe in Christ. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. This you're not going to believe. <clears throat> I was a professional sinner. I was sinning like crazy. Not as bad as these three guys. These guys were really bad. But I was bad. Ooh, the couple over here, they should be arrested. But anyway, back to this. <clears throat> when I came to the mercy seat, and I turned my back on myself and my goodness and my righteousness and all the good things I'd done in my life or I thought I'd done. God himself declared me innocent. I'm not guilty anymore. <clears throat> Why? Because the righteousness of God in Christ was imputed to me. Not from a minister or a man. It came directly from God. And I became an innocent man. I couldn't believe it. That's one of those too good to be true things. You mean to tell me that I don't have to earn this, fix this, repair it, build it up? No. It was all done for me at Calvary. You mean to tell me all these religions are deceived? 100%. Every single religion is false. Why? Because God doesn't justify anyone apart from Christ. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> This isn't going to be on YouTube, is it? No. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> what now? Instead of keeping the law, there it is. I get to go to the mercy seat, the real one now. Not that one. Why is this great? Well, if I do a lot of good things about the law, the scribes and Pharisees, the religious people, the the imams and all those guys, they're like, hey, I'm killing this thing. Look how, look what I've done. Jesus sat around looking at the treasury. Hey, here's all this money. Look at the bags. Bags of silver, bags of gold. Getting her done. A woman with two farthings walks up and puts them in there. And Jesus goes, hey, you see that woman over there? That old woman? Yeah, what about her? She put in more in there than all the other ones added up in the eyes of God. 
well, wait a minute. You can't pay the bills with the eyes of God. Hey, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glories. That widow there had her needs met. She gave by faith and love. They gave from show. Because the law said, hey, 10% tithe. Bring in the tithes. 10%. Right? That's what the law said, wasn't it? I misquoting it. Not anymore. Whatever you got to give, a little bit or all of it, is accepted by God in Christ. Well, I only gave 9%. Hell is coming to breakfast. No. <laughs> no. When I gave 11%, I'm going to get more blessings. You are, Is anybody listening? Yeah. None of that means anything. No, you get it by what works? No, the law of faith. Boasting, hey, I'm doing a great job, is now excluded. Everything goes to Christ. Thank you, Jesus. He gets all the credit because he did all the hard work. Is this helping anybody? Yeah. Therefore, we conclude, let's get ready to wrap this up, that a man is what? Justified, declared innocent, dikaiao, by... Faith, choris, separate from the works of the law. Yeah. Any religion has all kinds of works. I listed them for you. All of them mean nothing to God. None of those people are justified. It's awful. They die. They think they go to some nirvana. There's no nirvana. It doesn't exist. For by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. Earning your way to heaven is an impossibility. By grace, you are saved through faith. It is not it's God's gift to you, not something I work for. For the works of the law, no flesh will ever be justified. So there is therefore now no katakrama. What does that mean? Condemnation and judgment. What? Once you become a born again Christian. You were judged at Calvary. You are not judged again until the judgment seat of Christ after you're dead. Oh, I know that's hypocrisy. That's a heresy right there. No, you're judged. That's true, but not by God. Demons judge you all the time. Satan's accuser of the brethren. People judge you constantly. Oh, you're judged from the moment you wake up until the moment you pass out at night. You're always judged by something or somebody, spirit world or human or government or what have you. God is not condemning you and judging you. He already did. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> you don't understand. Not too many people like you, and I don't know. 
your personality. Yeah, I get it. God likes you. Okay. I see several of you here with personalities that whoo. -hoo. When you go outside, you don't draw a crowd. Put it that way. But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. God has no negative thoughts about you. God is not judging you for being pissed off at him last week. Remember that? Remember when you got mad at him? Oh, you remember. You were praying about something that didn't come through. How do I know you did that? I've done it. He wasn't condemning you when you were yelling at him. Remember when you slipped and got back on porn? God was not condemning you when you were back on porn. Were the demons? Of course. Were other people? Of course. Of course. I'm talking about God now, not other people. Not your spouse, not your kid, not your employer. They will always condemn you. Yeah, that's part of life. Okay, That's living life. Life is that. There's no way to get out of that. God is not doing it. Now, works come back. Oh no, you're kidding me. I feel like a dog chasing my tail. No, it's a different kind of works. You see, after you get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, God does the works through you you don't do works on your own to get your own justification. The Holy Spirit living in there allows you not to walk in your flesh anymore. Why? Because the power of sin is broken. If you go back into your sin, the demons will come for you. The people will come. Everybody, the church people will condemn you. Everybody will come down on you. God will not. You know why? Because you're justified. You were declared innocent. Did you know a double double jeopardy is? God has it. Only it's extensive. It's not just for one crime. See, in America, you can't be tried again over that crime. If the jury says, hey, not guilty. Well, that crime, they can get you on another one. Hello? Not with father. He declared you not guilty. Now, if you sin again, did you sin again? Oh, yeah, you did. The devil's right on top of you, accusing you. Hey, look what they did. Look what they said. Look what they're doing. Look at their attitude. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, that'll happen all the time. Father doesn't do that to the person. God is not mad at you anymore. Why? Romans 8, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free. Eleutherao means in Greek, you've been set at liberty. From the law of sin and death. You are not going to die and go to hell. It's not going to happen. You were set free. From eternal judgment. Why? Because you threw your righteousness out. And you received the righteousness of God in Christ. You have been liberated from condemnation and judgment 
you were judged at Calvary and the verdict was you're innocent go free you may condemn yourself <coughs> oh yeah you're hard on yourself because you got a rejection demon from your childhood and all oh, he's always pounding on you we can get rid of him tonight Amen. you Amen. can't get rid of God's love for you right. you have been declared not guilty by God because you did not trust yourself What the law could not do in it in that it was weak through the flesh God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin and he did what there it was same Greek word Condemned and judged sin in his flesh What was so different about him? I don't get it. He did keep the law perfectly <laughs> He did not sin there was no sin imputed to him because he was not born in sin. Joseph was his stepdad. The Holy Ghost conceived him. The sin gene from Adam did not transfer to Christ. He had no earthly dad. I had a dad, unfortunately, and I got the sin gene from Pops. If you had a dad, you in some deep trouble. You inherited a monster and as soon as you realize the law of God is pointing out your sin that monster will revive and take over your life until you come to a I don't know a church somewhere and you go down to the altar shaking and then you fall down and throw your righteousness away you beg for mercy And you stop condemning yourself. In my counseling practice, number one problem, self-condemnation. You know why they condemn themselves? They don't understand this Bible study. They don't understand God is not condemning you. He is not judging you. He wants to help you. He said, well, I'm not living a holy life. That all can be changed through the process of sanctification. After you're born again and receive the Holy Spirit, if you renew your mind and you study the Word of God, slowly but surely you are sanctified in your Christian walk. God doesn't stand there with a bullwhip Whipping you to get you to sanctify yourself quicker. He works with you at your own pace and encourages you to do it quicker He doesn't beat you to do it You're not an ox And you're not a racehorse You don't God doesn't beat you You have been declared by God through Christ innocent you're innocent what's the worst thing you ever did before you got saved everything everything you know those weren't good answers <laughs> what's the worst thing you ever did nobody can see him before you got saved, disobey God, not married to him. Did you sleep with him before you were yes. married? Oh, you were an adulterer. Yes. Were you? Yes. Oh, okay. Hey, everybody. I'll get you her name and number later. <laughs> Listen, in God's eyes, it never happened. Amen. Never did. You're not listening. She never did it. That woman over there never married that guy. She never slept with him. Hello? This thing on? <laughs> she was declared innocent by God. The 
Did anybody have any real sins? How about you, sir? Liar. Smoke dope. Dope and lying. Good. Liar? Abortion. What'd you do? I had an abortion murder. Abortion. Oh, that's very sinful. What about you, ma'am? You had abortion too? Yeah. Did you know, are you both born again? I am. Are you? I have an abortion. I just have a lot of Are you born again? Yes. Are you? Absolutely. Did you know they never had an abortion? Right. Does anybody know that? <laughs> this thing on? They never aborted a child. Now, the medical records said they did, but in eternity, the medical records aren't around. Father's around. Hello? Anybody here murder anybody? Anybody? How many other women here had an abortion? Raise your, raise your hand. We have an abortion. One, two, three, four, five, a guy, six, seven. High school? Yeah, seven. Any others? There's one eight nine Okay According to the world Okay, if depending on your political view We have nine murderers here If you have another political view uh, Nothing happened But in the eyes of God according to the law you murdered nine people You're a murderer and according to the law, you should be stoned tonight. A lot of you wondered what that dump truck was out in the front there with all them rocks. In the eyes of God, none of it ever happened. There is therefore now no katakrama, condemnation and judgment on those who are in Christ Jesus who walking not after the flesh but after the spirit now those of you that had abortions there was nine of you raise your hand if you're still having them nobody they repented is raise your hand if you never asked God to forgive you for that raise your hand if you never ask him to forgive you Nobody raised their hand There were zero abortions at the deliverance center tonight zero All nine of those children are now in heaven because their sin was not imputed That's the incredible dichotomy of abortion in the world the, the abort people who do the abortion they die and go to hell the babies are in glory It's exactly the opposite of what you think which is typical for Jesus. What's God telling you tonight? Hey, you're not guilty. Stop condemning yourself. Stop condemning yourself. In the United States, the death life expectancy has now gone down for the first time in decades. Why? Suicides are skyrocketing and they're so bad now. They've affected the national uh, Longevity death rate. Can you imagine that? People are now statistically living shorter lives But every decade they always live longer because of ex Improvements in medical care and technology and so on except I Think it was in 2015. It started to go down every one of those people they committed suicide could have been declared not guilty by God could have been saved and been given a brand new life in Christ raise your hand if you attempted a suicide years ago when you were severely depressed one two three four five there's a six seven there's an eight nine 
nine people nine people abortions nine people attempted suicide notice that Did you ask God to forgive you for that raise your hand if you did one Only six Three of you didn't Did you know that those six people Never did it They never did it To use it to use one of our terms their record was expunged What am I doing up here? I'm trying to get you to see that there's no longer any reason to condemn yourself for anything. You are not under the law. You are under grace. This guy smoked dope. No. No, he didn't. No, he, no, he thinks he smoked it. But God declared him innocent. He was justified. Because... He received the righteousness of God in Christ for Christ is the end of the law to all those who believe there's no longer reason for him to condemn himself for being an addict all right we'll close the service dear Jesus I'm asking you right now there's some people here tonight who have Katakrama, they have condemned themselves for their past sin and their failures and their regrets and their sorrows. The devil keeps bringing up their past because he knows it's effective. He knows they'll stop and think about it. He knows he can use regrets to hurt them. They haven't forgiven themselves even though you forgave them even though you forgave them and therefore they have now committed the sin of idolatry they have placed themselves Lord above you they are holding themselves guilty over something you told them they were innocent of I'm asking you to forgive them tonight. I'm asking you for mercy tonight. Nine people raised their hands. They had an abortion. And some of them still feel bad about it. They have negative emotions about it. I'm asking you to help them repent of that. Because you do not feel bad about them. You declared them innocent as if it never happened. As if it never happened. Two guys told me tonight they sinned, they did everything they said. Any of those sins, all of those sins, no longer exist, Lord. And if they're still being tormented by what they did in their past, that spirit of torment is going to let them go tonight. And when they walk out of here, they're going to be free. Now, if you've got any bad feelings about yourself and your past, I want you to come down here and let me pray for you. You look at your past and you go, oh boy, I can't believe I did that. That bothers me to this day. I would give anything to go back 10, 15 years. And why shouldn't I have done it this way? If I'd only done it that way, if I hadn't have gotten involved with that person, if I hadn't have taken that job, if I hadn't have moved to this town, if I hadn't have gone here, if I hadn't have gone there, you have ifs in your life. You've got regrets in your life. And Father has no regrets about you. None whatsoever. He has no regrets whatsoever about you. 
None at all. Ministry team will come forward now and help me out. God has no regrets about you. None. None. Why? You've been justified by the righteousness of God in Christ. You've been declared innocent. You're innocent. You're innocent. What did you do? You were innocent. You date raped a gal. You molested a child. You fondled somebody. No, you didn't. Not in the eyes of God. You've been declared innocent of what you did. Now, the results of what you did, yeah, they may still be around. The Holy Ghost can fix that. Absolutely. When you, you reap what you sow, that's true with everybody. But in God's eyes, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how God sees you. He sees you innocent. And it's a sin for you to condemn yourself. Will you repent of it? Will you do it? You're not under the law, you're under grace. You're not here because you're a righteous person. He made you righteous. You're not here because you're trusting yourself. You don't trust yourself, do you? No. I don't either. I don't want to trust myself. I, I, I always fail. I screw up all the time. We repent of it tonight. Those regrets. Your failures. Some guy told me over there, I was a liar. Lied all the time. Hey, if you were an addict, all addicts are chronic liars. They lie all the time. They'll do anything to use. So they lie and tell everybody every story. In the eyes of God, you never told a lie. Not one time did you ever lie. I've been a drunk for years. No, you haven't. When you ask God to forgive you, it was like you never took one beer. It's over. Well, I got a court date and I got, well, that's man. Court dates are man. Relatives are man. Yeah, other people may look at you like, yeah, you're a piece of garbage. I'm talking about what God thinks of you when he looks at you. That's my job. And when he looks at you, he looks at your future, what you could be in Christ, what you could be if you yielded your life over the Holy Ghost. He sees what you could be. That's how he looks at people. He doesn't see them for their past. He sees them for their future. Because he's God. He can see your future. He likes your future. But you'll never have a future if you don't forgive yourself and you don't repent of these regrets. Will you do it tonight? Let's pray. Bow your, bow your head. Father God, these are the people here, Lord, that are your future servants, your future faith healers, your future... Uh, exorcists, your future soul winners. They're standing right here at the altar. Look at there's several of them. The devil's the devil knows their future is fantastic. He knows that. That's why he fights them so hard. That's why he's always trashing them. That's why he always brings people to hurt them. That's why he always runs them down and reminds them of the sin of their past. That's why he does it. Does it all the time. They don't have any sin tonight, Lord. They asked you to forgive, and you did. 
they asked you for the justification of Christ and you gave it to them, you told them they were innocent. Justification is innocence. There it is. Come on out. Go. Come on out. There it comes. Right here. Come on out. Right here. Come out of there. Get out of that body right now. You have been declared innocent, honey. You're innocent if you'll receive it. I have been declared innocent right now in the name of Jesus. And I receive it right now, Lord. I've been declared innocent. I command this negative, critical spirit to come out of my brain right now. In the name of Jesus, I command him to come on out. Come on out of there. Right now. You spirit of drugs, I want you out of that body tonight. You pervert. You get out of that body right now. You pervert. Come out of there. Hurry up. I have been declared innocent. I am not a pervert. The spirit is a pervert. The spirit is a pervert. I am not a pervert. I did not murder a child. I did not do it. God forgave me. That sin has been wiped out. Come on. There it goes. Big breath. Take a big breath. Good girl. There you go. Holy Spirit, come in. There it is. Come on in. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on in. Big breath. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Thank you, Jesus. You rotten devil. You come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. Come on out. Quickly. Come on out of there right now. Come out. Come out of him right this second. You filthy spirit. You demon from childhood. Come out of there right now. Booze. Dad. My demons from my dad. Come out of that body right now. Let's go. Violence. Bad women. Demon affected women. Come on out of there right now. Come on out right now. Regrets. Come out in Jesus' name. There it is. Keep coughing. Come on out. Come on. Come on out now. Get out of that body. Come on quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly. Low self esteem. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Get out of there. Come on. Take a big breath. Come out right now. Come on out, devil. Come out of her. There he is. He's coming out right now. That's him right there. Coming on out. Every every woman. All the drugs. All the insanity. Come on out. Out of there. All the regrets. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Every regret. Every lie. Come on out. Let's go. Just repent of it. I repent of it right now. Come out in Jesus' name. I want every demon of drugs out of my body. Go. I want every curse word out of my mind. Go. I want all this hate out of my soul. Go. Come on out right now. Get out. Come on out. Go. Regrets. Regrets. What is it? Uh, pretty much a lot of like hostile thoughts coming into my head. Yeah. And, uh, I see. I know it's like. Okay, now. You're making a mistake. It's easy to fix. Come out of there. Take a big breath. Big breath. Come on out. There it is. Come out. There he is. Right there. Come out of that body. There he is. Right there. Come out of it right now. Come on out. Quickly. Come out, you rotten witchcraft spirit. Come out of it, buddy. Witch, come out right now. Go. Out of the name of God. Come out of it. Come on out. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Demon of fear. Go. Demon of fear. Take a big breath. There he comes. Coming out right now. Keep coughing. Come on. Keep coughing. Go. Come on out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on out. Come on out of there. Come on out. Now listen. Come out right now. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Here's you. And here's him. He's in there. No, you're not done. Breathe. Come out of that body right now. Out. Get out of there right now. Come out right now. Spirit, go. Come on now, spirit. There he comes right now. Come out of her stomach. Come out. Spirit of adultery, come out of her body. There it comes. What he says is not you. And that's his sin, not yours. Come on out of there. Don't you stop. You come out of buddy right now, you witch. I want you out of there right now. You're coming out tonight, all of you. You're coming out tonight, all of you, I said. No, you're not taking her home. You're not taking her home. 
you're not taking it home, get out of that body. The thoughts in your head are not yours. Yeah. It's not your sin. Yeah. God's not mad at you because of what he says. Any more than we've been mad at you for what I say. I'm not you. <laughs> no, keep coughing. Come on. Keep coughing. Those are demons coming out. Come on. There it is. Come on. Get out of there quickly. Come on. I'm going to show you Come on. Perfect. Hurry up. <laughs> How do you stop from having Come out. Now, uh, that's the second mistake you're making. Come on out of there right now. Come on, sweetheart. You're getting delivered tonight. You hear me? God loves you. He wants to help you. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Just your kid. Now listen, that's the second mistake you make. Come out. The demons are using your negative thoughts in your mind to attack your soul so you feel bad. No. Close. Open your mouth. Come on out of there. There he goes. Come out right now. Spirit, come on out, woman. Come out of the woman of God. Get out of her right now. Come on out. Come out right now. Every ugly man that ever touched your body comes out tonight. There he is. Get him out of your womb. Come out of her womb. Out of her vagina right now. Come out of there. Come on out quickly. Come out of something. He's tricking you. It's all him. It's not your emotions. Come out. Come on out. Demons from your parents. Come out right now. Hating your body. Come out. There it comes. Here they come. He's tricking you. Those are his emotions and his thoughts. He's lying. He's doing it to hurt you. Come out of there. Mother. Mother. Come out now, mother. Come up. Come out of me. Come out now. Come on out. You're, you're, he's winning because you're not fighting him where he's at. It's not your thoughts. Come out of there. What's your dad do to you? Dad never did anything to me. My, my aunt. Your aunt. What'd she do? She was Christian for a long time. What's her name? Got, got, uh, Mary Ann. And she kissed me on the lips like three years ago. And then I tried to kill myself on heroin. Mary Ann? Yeah. Okay. Now. But I was raped. Who raped you? I was raped. Uh, after Mary Ann or before? I was raped. Uh, I've been raped. Before Mary Ann or after? Yeah, but she, she projected a lot of that onto me as a child. Okay, and who raped you raped. the first time? Uh, my, 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 my brother, he, we, but it wasn't like... It, it was fondling? It, it was because she was projecting that onto us, so we started doing it. Okay. And then she started to get me to... What, what was her down. name again? Mary Ann. Okay, now, stand here. Raise your hand. Raise your hands. Okay. Now, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who despitefully use you. Now, that's what she did. She despitefully used you. Okay? So I want you to pray for her right now. Dear Jesus, I forgive her and I ask you to bless her. I want you to bless her life. I want you to help her. Because you have authority over that spirit. But you can't beat him because you don't see what he's doing. See, for example, if I was invisible right now and I, and you, and I did that to your arm, you would go, hey, there's something wrong with my arm. i got to go to the doctor. My arm's jacked back behind me. The doctor would go, well, I don't see anything wrong with you. There's some medication, muscle relaxers. I'll get some physical therapy. But if you knew it was me, then you would say, Mike, I command you to stop doing that. It's not you. There's nothing wrong with you. He's saying that. What do you say when I was teaching? Uh, I honestly can't really remember, but... What's he saying now? Right now he's trying to like be quiet. Yeah, he's scared. Okay. But it's like, yeah, they come and they have this feeling in my head. And feeling. What yeah. feeling? What yeah. feeling? What feeling? Uh, feeling is like, uh... It's like if someone like attacked your mind and then gave you like rage towards people or fear towards people. What's that feel like? Look at this, they're doing that, they're doing this, and it's like accusatory thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's or not you. Never, it's not me, no. 
No. But then it starts to somehow starts to what? affect my physical body, and then I'm like, Come on. it's like I've got to delete it. We're just trying to get me running out of the room. Now, now, see how he's beating you there? Yeah. You said, did, did you pray for her? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Now just take a big breath and command the demons to come out of you. Go now. What was her name again? Marianne. Marianne, I command you to come out. Come on out. Donald Green and Eagle Zorka. Who? Donald Green and Eagle Zorka. Donald 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 Zorka. Don the feelings you're having, the feelings you're having are him. It's not you. Okay, so he gets you to leave or to go somewhere or to uh, drink something or watch something. That's why you're losing. Okay, you have to turn on him. Okay. What's his name, by the way? You don't know? I don't think you tell me the truth if I ask you. Okay, no, he wouldn't. He probably lied. He probably lied, but we don't need his name. Okay. It's a seducing spirit, a lying spirit. He's in your head. Right? Close your eyes. What's your name again? Anthony. Yeah, Anthony. Okay, Father God, I ask you to give Anthony the anointing. I give him the anointing and the gift of hate for this demon in his brain. You rotten spirit, I know you're in there. I place a curse of failure upon you. I command you to fail. I curse you to fail. In the name of Jesus, he's going to receive the gift of hate in the soul and attack you right now. In the name of Jesus, you seduce your spirit. Get out of my head! Don? Don was his name? Don and Igor and Olga. Olga is a witch. She, she did all this witchcraft on me before I went in the military. Okay. And those three I've been praying for, and I forgive them. Okay. Ready? All of them got to come out. Father God, all these abusers the devil sent to her to hurt her. We forgive all of them and ask you to remove any art she has in her body or her soul for these people. Bad feelings. Get out of my head. Scream at him. Now go. Don, come out now. Okay, take a breath. Blow. Come on out, Don. Come on out. There he comes right here. Keep coughing. Go. Go. Good. Get him out of there. Come on. There he comes. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out right now. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of your feet. Come out of your body. Right now. Get out of my head. Come out of my body. Get out right now. Get out of my body right now. Come on, sweetie. Fight. He's coming out. Witchcraft. Witchcraft and sorcery. Get out. Come out, sweetie. Get out. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Come out right now. Somebody put a spell on the witchcraft. Oh, okay. Come out of there right now. Get out of my head. Get out of my head right now. Get out of my head. Go. Get out of my head. Go. Rage. Come on. Go now in Jesus' name. Go now in Jesus' name. Go. Go. Get out of here. Go. Come out of my right now. Go. Come out. I hate you. Come out of me. I hate you. Come out of me now. I command you to go. I command you to go now. I command you to go now. How's this guy doing? Uh, he, he needs to do like a one-on-one -on -one next Thursday. He, he's got okay. a bunch of stuff. It's a too much for tonight. Okay. Oh, you want to see me? Go! Go, devil! Go! Get out of there, you pervert! Come out quicker! Come out quicker, I said! Come out quicker, I said! Yes. Negativity, lies, go in Jesus' mighty name. Negative thoughts, come out of my head, you seducing spirit. Come out right now. Go, you liar. Go, you liar. 
Get out of that body right now. Get out of there. I hate your guts. Satan, I hate you. I hate your guts. Get out of my body right now. I am innocent. Come on, saints of God. You are innocent. You've been declared innocent by God. Take command over the demons. Take command. Take command over the spirits right now. Take command over the demons. Command the demons to go. Go. What's wrong with this gal? Now, uh, who rejected you when you were a kid? Everybody. Everybody. Everybody? Guess who hasn't rejected you? Guess who hasn't? Nobody. Well, Jesus. He's dying to have you. Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Holy Spirit, come in. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Jesus. Demon of rejection, come out of her womb. Whoa, there it goes. There it goes, coming out. Yeah, keep coughing. Come on out, buddy. Keep coughing. Come on. Come on out. Quickly. Come on out. Come on out. Get out of that body. Come on out right now. Go. You stinking drug addict. You come out of there. He's not a drug addict. You are. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Every woman. Every woman who slept with her had demons. Come out of her body right now. Come out of this glory. Come out of the channels. Come out right now. Go. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go now. All the women, every one of them, go. All the perverts, all the oral sex, all the anal sex, come out. Come out, you pervert. You adulterer, you fornicator. Go. Go. Come out there. Keep coughing. Come out. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Don't you stop. Get out of my area. Don't you stop. Don't you stop. Keep going. Go now. What's she saying? What's she saying? She had a fractured skull and two teeth. She had a what? She had a fractured skull. Fractured skull? Where was it fractured at? Where? I was, she was just telling me that. Where is it at? I don't know. It was when I was two months of age. I was in oh. my hospital. My parents. And an abuse. There was abuse. My mother had a human Okay. My mom, my mom. Your mom's still alive? No, she died. She died, okay. Have you forgiven all those people? Dear Jesus, I forgive you and I, I thank you for my life. I thank you for saving me. I command my head to heal. Heal! Skull, heal! Heal! Heal now! Heal! Heal in Jesus' mighty name. Every demon from your mother. Come out now. Come on out. Come out. There it comes. There it comes. Go. Get out of that body right now. You don't get out of that body right now. You release the healing gift. The gift of healing. It's for healing people. What are you doing in there? Come out of that body right now. Come out. Say to the hate your guts. Did you hear me? I hate your guts. Get out of my body now. Come out of my spine. Come out of my spine. Come out. Hey, who is this guy? Brian. Are you, are you with him? Yes. Are you related? No, he's my boyfriend. He's your boyfriend? Yes. What's wrong with him? Um, he's been struggling with addiction with smoking and he's been lying about it and not tr telling the truth about it. Oh, no. Now listen, did somebody hurt you when you were a kid? How about a young adult? Anything bad ever happened to you? Really bad? Just an accident with my eyes. Just bitterness. You had an accident with your eye? What happened? My brother put a stick in my eye. 
Hi, I'm what age? Six. Age six? Is there something wrong with your eye? Blind. Are you blind? Okay. I see men with trees. What's your brother's name? Isaiah. Isaiah, in the name of Jesus, I command you. Isaiah, come out of that eye right now. All bitterness, and sorrow, and regret. Come out. Brother leaves now. Come on out. Come out here. Come out, your brother. Come out of his eye. Come on out. Come on out. Come out of that eye. Heal. Come on out. Come on. I let my brother go. I let my brother go. I let my brother out. Forgive my brother. Come on out. Go now. Come out. Heal. Heal. Demon of drugs. Come on out. Where are you going? Where are you going? Stay right here. Have a seat right there. Come out of my head. I let my brother go now. I release him now. Come out. You spirit of lying. Come out of my head. You liar. Come out, you liar. Pride and arrogance. Come out. Pride, come out. Come on out. Come out. Come on out. Go. Come on out. God, forgive me for my sin and lying. Forgive me for drugs. Forgive me for wasting my life. Forgive me for adultery. Go. Go. Come out. What are drugs is he on? Just marijuana. For years? Years? For years? Yeah. I can hear my scream of a pot. Come out of my head. Go. Keep coughing. There they come. Come on. Come on out. Come on. She's had a lifetime of abuse from yeah. childhood till now, practically. Come out of there. Come on. Keep coughing. Get out of there. Get out of there. Come out of my body. Get out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in there in the name of you. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Evil, come out of me. Evil. Evil, come out. Come out. Come out. Evil, come out of me. Evil. Come out. Go. Go. Evil. Evil, come out of me. Evil, come out. Evil. Get out of that body. Come on. There he goes. There he is. There he is. Come on. Come on. Go. Go in Jesus' name. There he is. Go in. We got him. Hold that. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Get out of that body. Go. Go. Out you go. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on, Come on, Come on, There they go. There they go. Run out right now. All of it. All of it. All of it. Hey, will you help Eric with this gal? She got witchcraft. Somebody put, she had a bunch of curses put on her. 
Get out of there faster. Come on, guys. Yeah. Come on, Spirit. Come on, Spirit. All of you. All of you. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go. Go. Out. Out. Come on, that body. Out. Go now. Go now. I don't know. They just started flying out of here. Get out of there. Evil. Evil. They're not evil. Get out of there, buddy, right now. Hurry up. Negative thoughts and lies. Come out. Come out of that head right now. Go. Come out right now. You let me go. You let me go. Come out of my sleep. Every demon I pick up from the one I slept with comes out tonight. Every one of them. Every chance for spirit. Go. Every chance for spirit. Go. No more regrets. Go. Go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a miracle from God. Speak it out. You speak in tongues? You speak in tongues? Oh, louder. Come on. 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 Oh, he goes, come in. Go to my son, that I was she did it. Go. Go. YouTubers, the Spirit of the Lord is moving now. Demons are flying out of people. You can't even believe it. It's all over the place. The devils are flying out of the bodies. Put your hand on your body or your head. Wherever the demons are, you've been justified and declared innocent by God. There's nothing wrong with you. You are eternally loved. Use your authority Christ gave you. Use the righteousness Christ gave you. Use the power Christ gave you and fight back. I'll be back next Friday for another unusual Bible study. This next one's funky. 7 p.m. YouTube.com slash House of Healing AZ. Go to the website, HardcoreChristianity.com. And read the two articles under the teaching page. The teaching page. Read the article, How Satan Converts the Mind. Read the other article, Is the Law of Moses for Today? Is the Law of Moses for Today? Read the third article, Satan's Counterattack. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. Fight back. See you next time.